so tonight we are going to be working on a vehicle that was towed in a few weeks ago it's currently stuck outside it's a 2014 Mercedes E350 and it was it was towed in the car actually starts but it doesn't engage any gear and the power steering does not work uh, it was brought to me from the dealer I guess the customer had sent it there they threw a bunch of parts at it and now it's here now as far as what the customer was trying to chase from the beginning I don't know and I don't know if what I'm chasing now is the same thing and as to why I say that is I'll show you the invoice from the dealer on the stuff that they did which again um, I don't know what we were chasing what we were doing it looks like they got the vehicle to start but now it's at a point where again where it doesn't move and power steering and uh, a bunch of lights on the dash so kind of bear with me it's I'm working late at night it's dark so and cold so I'm kind of trying to uh, bounce back and forth between outside and inside outside and inside so let's go We'll take a look let me show you what it's doing how it came in and see if we can find something out okay so there's the Mercedes uh, not gonna lie I did start looking at it already which is partially why I wanted to pick up the camera and bring you guys along to show you what's going on so for starters I've uh, I'll explain why steering wheel is off. That was done by me. But uh, let's see if I can. Get you a shot. Of what it's doing. So. Okay, so it starts and runs. And this is where we're at. A uh, bunch of messages. <coughs> I'll try to. Show you and so I'll move the lever and the indicator never changes so it doesn't grab gears and then with the steering wheel it's it's hard there's no assist going on so naturally it do a uh, complete system scan and this is the modules that do come up and then uh, multiple codes so we'll get you a shot of the report and what they are uh, let's say complaining about the the modules so in the engine so communication with the air conditioning misfire we don't care about that So, communication with traction system, communication with steering column module, and then in the trance, again, communication with traction, uh, looks like a, a central gateway issue, air conditioning again, steering column module again, uh, instrument cluster deal, the cluster, let's see, power steering malfunction, head unit which again is uh, like climate control I would assume can communication uh, stuff like that so with so many things going on and here we have in the uh, ignition lock uh, communication with traction system missing here's the, the gear shift control unit uh, complain about the ESP uh, traction again a direct select malfunction so that's going to be the lever up here on the stock and let's see traction again so as far as where to start um, no idea Other than it looks like we're going to have some sort of bus problem. Hopefully 
all related because uh, we do have multiple things going on. And so the things I want to look at as far as uh, the diagram is the two main ones that are, are being uh, tattletailed on. And that's going to be the steering column control module, which is it's actually this whole unit here, and the traction control. And we'll look at the diagram and kind of go from there. So here is a diagram of the, as you can see, as you can see the steering column control unit is this whole guy here. And it's just one small connector, 14 pin. And it's got two power feeds and two grounds there and there. And then it's got the two CAN data lines. And so this power comes from the front SAM, it's fuse 13. This is from the rear SAM, it's fuse 65. And since, again, I'm just interested for the time being on the steering control module and the traction control unit, I'm going to see if any of these fuses are, are common or possibly uh, grounds, but I doubt the grounds will be, these look like they're listed as being inside, and I'm sure the traction is on the outside. And here is the traction control unit, the ESP. And here is a ground, which is on the uh, in the engine bay. Um, and then this listed as 30, 30G, and this other 30 here. Those are the power supplies. So if we come over... They come from the front SAM as well, but none of the same fuses. So at this time, it's time to concentrate on one of these two and do basic checking to see if these modules alone separately are basically dead. So we've got to check power, ground, and can lines, see what's all there at those pins, at those modules and see why they're not communicating. But the reason why the steering wheel is removed is because I'm going to go ahead and check powers and grounds and can lines on the steering control module instead of the traction just because it's freezing outside and it's going to be easier to check that one inside the car for right now. So that's where I'm going to start checking at this connector and see what we find okay so I've got the uh, control module removed the whole assembly this is that 14 pin connector and this top row are the ones that we are concerned with the first two green ones are the um, bus lines next one is a ground the next one is a red for power Skips a spot, goes to red and black, that's power, and the last one is brown for ground. So, I'm just using a meter here. And we will, I'm um, tapped in there for a ground for right now, and we will check the, we'll do the, the power, one of the powers for now. So I'll keep you there, and there is the one power. Check the next one, and okay, we got uh, 1.8 on there. Now this is with the key out, so I'm just keeping that in mind. And then this is a can line. This is another can line. So, I'm going to key it up. Just key on the engine off. We'll go back to that same power. And key on, it's still the same voltage. Let's check the other power. Okay. 
Here's the can. Looks like can low. And there's can. Looks like that's can high. So for right now, I obviously don't like that. I'm going to look and see where that comes from and go from there. As far as which one it is, it's from the the left in it's the one two three four so pin four it's the full red um, wire now let's see where that comes from okay so there's pin four the full red and it's fuse 13 from the front SAM as far as uh, this description here from in an, an some sort of uh, current relay is where it's supplied from so I think from here I'm gonna go to uh, power distribution and see if I can then backtrack from there and so just for giggles right now I'm gonna go ahead check voltage there at the fuse at the front SAM and see if we have the same or different okay so there is fuse 13 you can see 12 next one's 13 14 so I'll tap into there and see what we get. I'll get you a shot of that. And okay, there we go. Same reading out here at the fuse box, the front SAM. And that will, I guess, kind of backtrack towards that current relay deal that they were describing and see, uh, see what we could find um, hey, in the... Uh, Probably look at power distribution uh, schematic. Okay, so I found that uh, current relay that they're referring to, and it's in the, I guess, uh, front electrical prefuse box. It's right rear engine compartment. So, looks like the rear SAM controls the relay, and then the power out gets distributed on two different fuses and this one goes to the front SAM so we'll look at this it's a uh, so letter D okay so finally found there's letter D from that prefuse and it comes up over continues over to letter M Yes, I know it comes down here, and it looks like it distributes somewhere. This is in the front SAM as well, but I want to show you that, the letter M, which is down here. So here's letter M, and then if you come over down here, that's fuse 13, the steering column module and then a, a, a camera deal but so that's our feed that's the fuse that's where we're getting the low voltage and just just for verification I'm writing down the list of these uh, fuses only the ones that are tied to this high tied up here to this line up here and then also this is letter P. Which is right there and it splits off in just to two. So fuse 14 and 26. And if you see 14, look what that goes to. The ESP. And then 26 looks like it's listed to the... Uh, the radio, maybe that's the uh, head unit, that one trouble code that I thought was climate, I guess maybe it's uh, the radio, so um, we'll just keep that in the back of our minds, but I'm just going to verify, check these mo other multiple fuses that I'll make a list of, make sure all those are, are the same, that way we can attribute it that to a feed problem to all that branch of uh, fuses. So here's a quick list of some of those fuses. 
It's uh, looks like 11 through or 11 through 17. Not all exactly, but it it's actually that whole basically row back there. So we'll just tap all those quick and see what we get. There's one, so that's fuse 12, fuse 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So yeah, that whole branch, that leg is uh, not getting enough power. Now they stated that it's somewhere in the right rear. Uh, and again, uh, this first time trying to deal with this uh, relay they're talking about, and the only thing I see or can think of is this module unit looking thing here, which uh, looks like has uh, some pretty big uh, power feed cables leaving it. There's a connector. And I know it's 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 actually hard to tell, but as I flick that um, cover over, I'm, I'm hearing some uh, clicking deals and whatnot. I know it's hard to to hear, but I hear some buzzing. And let me quickly check. I'll tap in to one of these. Okay, so we'll look at the meter. Wow, so that's from moving this. Just, if you look at the meter, the red light turns on and, and um, <laughs> okay, look. So we've got full, uh, full battery voltage. Let's go check inside real quick. And we're just coming into the car and look, look what's on the screen. Let's see if we can tap into the same area, same pin, see what voltage we get. So there. Put you on the meter, and there we go. We've got the source voltage there. We've got things lighting up, and, and so on. So, uh, let me install this guy and see if we can get. Uh, the gear to engage now. Okay, I've got that installed. Uh, one thing I noticed now, uh, when I took the key out, that the dome lights turned on. So let's just see what we get. Right, let's see. So we still have a power steering message, but. One thing again, I'm noticing these are, are, are lit up. Let's see. Okay, there. We've got tranny, tranny engagement. All right. Um, it looks like. Let's see. Go park. <laughs> Looks like our problem is in that, uh, what they call the pre-fuse box. Just wiggling, uh, brought back the power to the front SAM, which then powered up these guys. Uh, one thing I don't know yet is if we have power steering, which I'm not sure. We're getting that message, and I can't test it because the wheel is not on. So let me uh, get this steering module. Um inserted back in properly. I'll get the wheel on and uh, see if we have power steering. The other thing I noticed, obviously we have audio. Let's see if we have 
Okay. We have climate. Everything's working. Um, I could do a, a test, a, a quick scan, but let me get the wheel back on, get this situated, and go from there. Okay, I've got the wheel on, and still no power steering, but we do have gear engagement at this time, so got a couple things left to figure out. Uh, steering problem, and then I don't know if we'll need that pre-fuse assembly. Probably take it out, see if there's some type of loose contacts or what. Okay, so just uh, came back inside out of curiosity, looking at the power steering uh, wire diagram. So there's the control unit, and it's part of the the rack assembly, and it's pretty simple. So it's got a power ground and can lines. And the power actually comes from that pre-fuse box. Again, we're seeing issues and stuff, everything being tied back to that. So, I think for the moment, I'm going to go out there, uh, scan it again, clear everything. Uh, I guess verify if, if that we don't have communication there, I'm assuming. And then I will do my best to try to steer it, bring it inside, and then I want to take that guy out and inspect it. Okay, so I finally got it inside, and then I did a complete scan again. And so these codes in the engine control unit, now they're listed as stored. Transmission control unit, again, Storn, uh, the traction control, let's see, has an active code and it's for the electronic power steering control unit, which we know we are having an issue with, and then airbag obviously are squibs because we don't have the airbag installed. Again, uh, power steering message issue. So, what I will do is, I'm going to just wipe out everything here. Uh, I know we're going to have just power steering messages, but I'll wipe everything out. We'll remove that pre-fuse box and see. I mean, ideally, I would like to go check the power at the rack. I don't know if I can get to it right now. Um, I've got something on the lift. I might have to jack it up. but. Being that we know we've got some loose contact or something in that pre-fuse in that pre-fuse box, I want to get that removed, inspect it, and and see if I can find the fuse for the uh, power steering uh, module also. So that's the route I'm going to go for right now. Okay, so to uh, try to get some access to removing that pre-fuse box, we have to remove the battery and then kind of tilt it backwards and it took me a minute to try to figure out but there's this cover on the back of it and then now you've got these um, high powered cables or you have these uh, big cables here and so I'm just taking a look and let's see if I can show you now, I don't know if this is a problem or what, but there's like clay on this one. Not as much there. This one's just a stud. So they're they're loose, but I don't know if this one's supposed to be this this loose there. So and then another thing I noticed and it's actually in the invoice. It looks like they were messing around with this, but not too sure. But you see there on the uh, casing, looks like there's been some pry marks along there. So not sure what uh, what's going on. So I'm going to completely get this removed and then um, 
take a look at it. Okay, so I finally have it out. And I will tell you, yes, this one was really loose. So I bet that's our contact issue when we were moving it. Um, that one was loose, so was this one. But the other thing is they definitely were in there prying it open. That's how they left it. And then I bet you this big connector there is going to be for the for the power steering. It's only a one pin and it's a red wire. So I bet that's the one that goes down for the power steering. So inside there has to be a fuse uh, for that. So for right now, not sure what I'll do. Potentially might have to get a unit, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm putting the the box back in. I couldn't find anything wrong internally. The fuse for the power steering connector was still intact. Uh, I was ohm checking everything. And so that might be a whole totally separate issue. But I've got these cables in there good and tight. So let's see what we get. Okay, everything's back in good and tight. Let's see what we get. Okay. And we have power steering. <laughs> oh. All of that fixed from loose connections at the pre-fuse box. Okay, and I won't go through this whole story, but it looks like it was a no-start situation. They were trying to figure whatever out, possibly. But at some point, check pre-fuse box and no blown fuses. So, they clearly were in that pre-fuse box and caused the rest of the problems that they couldn't figure out and had to get the vehicle towed out of there. I mean, all in all, it was just a part of basic checking for trying to figure out a spot to start with. Again, we had no comms in a couple different modules. At that point, I kind of just decided to go with one that was, for me, the easiest to check my you know, uh, signals, powers, ground, can line, everything. Once we saw that voltage issue, then you kind of just start backtracking and uh, eventually it'll lead you to a cause. Luckily, it took care of everything else that the vehicle had going on with it. So a, a one repair fix takes care of all of this. This was a man-made problem that I got lucky to find that when I messed around in that pre-fuse box area, I can hear something clicking or turn on, which made me check that power at the fuse to see if it changed or came up, which it did. So then it, it made me concentrate on that as well, based off of also the diagram leading me there. So, so for this one, that, that's all that it's going to take. We'll contact the customer. Have them pick it up, and hopefully it was something you could follow along, pay attention with, get some good techniques out of this, and thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and until the next time, that's all.